Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Uh, shall we start, sir? Yes. Uh, 76 year old female presented to ER, sir. On initial uh, primary survey, airway patient was uh, not uh, responding to any sound, but there were no any gurgling sounds or no secretions, sir. Hmm. Airway was patent. Coming to breathing, respiratory rate was 22 per minute and saturation was 100% at room air. Bilaterally, air entry was equal. Coming to circulation, pulse was uh, 86 per minute and BP was 130 by 70, sir. And peripheral pulses were palpable with CRT less than 3 seconds. Sir. And coming to disability, patient was having E1, E2, V1, M5. And uh, 8. 8, sir. E2, V1, M5 with pupils bilaterally reactive with 2 mm. And uh, patient is uh, moving all four limbs, basically, but uh, not obeying commands or anything. What is the importance of pupil in an unconscious patient? Pupil in... Uh, pupil. Sir, it's about the... Uh, it uh, rules out IC. We can say if anisocoria is there, we can consider to be having any... In traumatic injury, basically, to see if there is any... If it is not traumatic injury, can you not... Then we can think of poisons like meiosis... No, no, you are talking about anisocoria. First, uh, tell that. Okay. If it is not traumatic injury, can you suspect anisoc... Some... Hemorrhagic stroke. stroke. Okay, it's one of the sign of uh, coning. Okay, anisocoria. Mm. One side is uh, involved and herniation. that side is herniation. Or uh, third cranial nerve is involved. That also occurs in raised ICP. Okay. Then, other than that, brainstem stroke, you get pinpoint, pinpoint, people. pinpoint people. Then, toxicology. Toxicological, com uh, like so, meiosis and OP, OP poisoning, poisoning, you get meiosis. people. Meiosis. Pinpoint. Meiosis. Meiosis. Huh? Pinpoint people. Huh. Lethora poison? Midrias. Dilated. Dilated midrias. Like that you can see lot of uh, clinical findings. Uh, you can get lot of clinical inference from people alone. Okay. So, uh, next coming to the exposure, patient was having temperature of 98 degree Fahrenheit and uh, GRBS was 675, sir. Okay. So, we have a patient which is uh, non-responsive and low GCS with the high sugars. So, we have taken a VBG, sir. Okay. In the VBG, the patient's pH was 7.23 okay. and uh, bicarb was 8.5. Is there any difference in uh, uh, pH of artery, artery, arterial sample and venous sample? How much? 0.3. 0 0.3. So, it's a very minimal difference. PH of the patient was 7.23. It is having severe onion gap, high onion gap metabolic acidosis, sir. Okay. And uh, onion gap you have to calculate now. First you see uh, okay, sir. this acidosis, then you have to calculate onion mm. gap. What is onion gap here? Here onion gap is 22.3, sir. Okay, it's very high. More yeah. than 10 is high. high. Okay. And uh, patient's sugars was 675. Okay. So before that year, when you tell onion gap, one is already diabetes, there is a chance for decay. Other causes also you have to rule out, like other things. What all other things can produce a agma? Very yes. high and uh, Sir, like uh, methanol poisoning, okay. uremia can cause, okay. then diabetic ketosis, then uh, pa uh, then salicyclates can cause, okay. then uh, even uh, ethanol can cause okay. lactic so, acidosis. So, yeah, lactic. so, you have to tell all the lactate level, you have to tell any alcohol smell <coughs> is there, you have to tell. Okay, Then you are probably ruling out uh, the causes for high anion gap okay. metabolic acidosis. Then you can finally come to a, a single point that is decay. Here the patient's lactate was 1.9, sir. Okay. Patient is a 72-year-old female uh, with the history of not taking proper intake of food and her own medication, insulin medication for last two days. Okay. And no any history of alcohol intake or no any history of any uh, ingestion of any unnecessary tablets or chemicals. Okay. So, here in this view that uh, on medication without taking... Uh, pH is how much? 7.2, sir. 7.2. So, we can probably diagnosis of uh, diabetic ketoacidosis can be made at this okay. point of time. So, as in treatment of the diabetic ketoacidosis, the initial management would be the fluids and then the insulin management. So, you have to assess whether we can give fluids. How do you assess? We need to see the signs of any dehydration okay. or we need to look out for uh, uh, overload uh, to against the fluids to give. Patient has no any heart there failure, any kidney situations. failure. One is a patient who is having chronic liver disease, who is having hypoalbuminemia, volume overloaded condition, but now he is coming with decay. Okay. 
another patient is not having any volume or red situation but he is also coming with dk how do you know that this is this patient is having water deficiency other patient is having water excess is it possible to make a diagnosis in this type of patients water deficient so the hematocrit can give us an idea about the dehydration extent in okay, a severely dehydrated one, one possibility it may tell you that dehydration but there is only an acute condition even then hematocrit can tell uh, sometimes the patient is dehydrated or not otherwise checking the ivc is a ivc is a most uh, most uh, important vital sign uh, lab investigation or point of care investigation which can be done because patient who is having already volume overload excess volume which is extravascular but here we are considering only intravascular volume loss we are not talking about extravascular that is already gone out and it is in third space it might not have shifted inside so patients with already with liver failure kidney failure they sometimes can present with volume overloaded clinical state but intravascular volume may be low no. because of dk so you have to know uh, either you have to put a central line and see what is a central line uh, pressure or you have to see ivc and see whether it is collapsible or volume can be given access or not so in this case the patient was not no in case of any liver failure mm. or even uh, heart failure or kidney failure patient but uh, patient's uh, creat was on the higher side of 1.4 considering it to be a dehydrated state it could be a pre renal kind of urea sir urea was 122 okay so it's a disproportionately elevated urea level so you have to consider that it's a pre renal cause for renal failure okay. volume volume loss so as a, as a, the initial management of dk would be giving the fluids and apart from the uh, starting on the insulin infusion for re- hyperglycemic control okay so Here, how much fluid you are given for this patient initial uh, we start with 2 liters over 2 hours of fluid followed Our fluid sir we can choose either normal saline or ringer lactate as the fluid of choice okay. but uh, the other clinical picture in this patient was sodium was 146 on initial presentation okay. so corrected so what, sodium what is the other differential diagnosis which come to your mind when the sodium is very high uh, very high even when there is a high hyperglycemia so corrected sodium may be 145 was the corrected sodium corrected sodium is 155 sodium is 144 okay so we need to even consider it to be a hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state so it's a mix of hhs with dk mm. so both can coexist okay so in books we uh, read that hhs is a different entity dk, uh, DK is a different entity but if you read the textbooks see, there itself it is written the same patient can have both the condition together the main difference between two is one you have ketone Insulate. bodies other one you have volume loss excess okay the one condition you have minimal insulin other condition you have absolutely insulin resistance no insulin it is not insulin resistance it is absolutely no insulin in the body okay so yeah, as such in dk because the pathophysiology being that uh, as there is no insulin produced or there no insulin present the cells cannot be taking the hyper uh, the glucose into them and they'll be using alternate sources of energy and be producing ketone bodies okay. uh, whereas in hyperosmolar uh, hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state the there can be increased insulin no you have to think one more thing can you get ketone bodies positive in condition other than dk yes, is it possible but few conditions like alcoholic ketoacidosis okay. next starvation okay. next even in partially treated dk right now going into hhs okay. can the baseline ketone bodies come severe vomiting severe vomiting can produce ketoacidosis patient has not taken any food for few days starvation can mm-hmm. alcohol can produce ketone bodies pregnancy can produce ketone bodies so sometimes what will happen you get an hhs associated with since patient is not take starving for last 3 4 days ketone bodies can be formed whatever it is treatment is all, almost similar not 100% almost similar as in case of uh, dk the main management would be uh, introducing the insulin infusion to start a patient on insulin so that the cells will be taking the glucose into the cell and the ketone body production will be suppressed uh, in case of the hhs management main management would be correcting the dehydration or the osmolarity main 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 uh, uh, treatment is fluid only because yeah. once you correct the fluid sugar sugar value will actually come down because you are diluting your blood yeah. where in a concentrated area where the sugars are very high when you are adding water it will anyway dilute 
so there itself we can see the in, uh, response the sugar will come down ketone bodies will come down okay total response will improve okay so initial treatment is always fluid second line potassium correction third line only your insulin comes okay in this case initially the potassium was higher range of 5.4 sir so there is no need to worry you can worry. start uh, also because of the dehydrated concentrated state hyperkalemia can be a finding initially in such dk okay. patients okay. once we hydrate the patient we need to regularly monitor so that uh, the potassium level doesn't fall and for the insulin to act we need to supplement okay. the potassium okay. other than that in this case because of uh, uh, the hydration uh, within the next 8 uh, hourly monitoring the sodium which was corrected sodium which was like 156 fell to 140 within the next normally sugars are very high these all these things are theoretical yes. but when the sugars are very high what will happen to potassium sugars uh, potassium basically when the in the kidney the into the cells into the shift cells. into the cells intravascularly the potassium levels can go low, low. but here when the sugars are very high and potassium is also very high when you dilute the blood the shift can happen to which side from the cells to it can shift back so there is a chance of hyperkalemia but if the kidneys are normal we no need to worry about that it will be removed through the kidneys if the kidneys are removing water along with that uh, potassium. potassium also will be removed we started with the fluid management and then after it overly when we have checked the sodium levels were also uh, falling what fluid you will select in this patient uh, normal saline is the or half ns would be half better half N- ns is better half ns is the better choice here along with that you can give free even rice tube feed also right so uh, free water also can be given so here half ns is the choice so the serum osmolality of the blood was uh, falling down mm-hmm. the goal of treatment would be serum osmolality of less than 24 milli osmol per 24 hours to fall we okay. should not in- fall the serum osmol more than 24 osmolality okay. here it is 22 you can you are tra- targeting to 22 a serum osmolality difference within the 24 hours okay apart from that uh, checking the regular electrolytes uh, if potassium is low supplementing the potassium and uh, as the patient is already in initially hypernatremic we need to uh, ca- control the correct it not like aggressively correct the hypernatremia okay. because more than 8 to 10 should not be corrected within the 24 hours okay. uh, other than that uh, the patient uh, after giving a 24 hour insulin of 69 units of insulin in 24 hours ketone bodies came negative and anion gap has uh, minimized and became normal acid base disorder okay so we can stop at that point of time the insulin infusion and convert it into tid dosing of the 24 hour insulin okay but uh, during this course of the management even after 48 hours of the treatment patient sensorium hasn't improved as such then what all things you'll suspect first you now we need to approach the cases altered mental state approach to an altered mental state kind so of so during the treatment of uh, dk, DK. hypernatremia patient has developed altered behavior what is the first diagnosis hhs controlling hhs uh, that is the first diagnosis hhs diag- or dk can produce uh, some sort of altered behavior that is the first diagnosis then hypoglycemia hypoglycemia has not occurred here no it's what not what is uh, sepsis it uh, can be any infection to the brain meningitis okay so that is the next possibility next another thing is because of the osmolar differences we can cause spontane demyelination spontane demyelination will not occur from hypernatremia to hyponatremia but there can be some shift of the water can occur that can sometimes produce altered mental state more than that what else can happen in a dk hhs Sir, brain. because brain cells, because like uh, initially it's hyperosmolar, the water is absorbed that from the brain. That we already told. There is a shift of water can happen. Mm. Shrinking of brain, brain can, happen. can happen. What else? What else? Myocardial infarction, stroke, Look. everything is common in DK. DK. What is the reason? Because of high viscosity so of the brain. That is the most important thing we have to suspect. So any stroke or, my- stroke or myocardial infarction is more common in DK. DK. Which part of the brain, if you get a stroke, which part of the brain is involved when there is altered altered behavior? Choroid area where the... Parietal, that is only one side, no? MCA territory, if there is a large infarct, you can get altered behavior loss of... But coma is typical in which area? Front. Frontal. Frontal. Frontal means altered behavior. Otherwise, herniation... There is ascending reticular formation. 
what is that brain stem sending reticular formation is involved then you can get altered behavior it's a brain stem stroke okay so we had went with an mri imaging to see for the vessels it was normal so there was no any infarct or any changes so okay next we went ahead with the csf analysis by getting a lumbar puncture okay she had severe vomiting can anything produced by vomiting in this patient altered behavior loss of consciousness these are being hypernatremia any vitamin deficiency can be Thi- precipitated by thiamine. severe vomiting thiamine deficiency thiamine deficiency what is that condition called as Cot- Corsacoff cycles Psych- and Wernicke encephalopathy. Okay, which part you will see in MRI? Uh, Wernicke system. Mammillary bodies. Mammillary. Okay, so you have to see all these things. Okay, there are a lot of differential diagnosis. Sometimes nothing will fit to your case. It may be only because of the uh, like hyperglycemic state. She might have gone to this condition. Mm-hmm. but uh, during our evaluation the mri was normal lumbar puncture did not reveal any findings but during the next few days of the lots of hospital patient improved well now she was developed what the full gcs of e4 v5 m6 okay apart from the further complaints patient in the later stages developed a blackening of the toes of the right lower limb what may be the reason for that might be during the dk viscosity there can have been deposits and no, it was mostly there may, there may be an existing lesion yes. mm-hmm. on top of that patient has developed severe dehydration and reduced vascularity to that area she might have developed that problem okay we had went with an ultrasound arterial doppler to see the blood supply and there was a absent or monophasic kind of a flow indicating okay. it to be peripheral arterial disease okay. for which treatment we have started with an antiplatelets and the anticoagulation okay. as the management do you really think that uh, heparin will help in uh, arterial obstruction mm, no. till not help on your platelets only have their role in arterial platelets and uh, statins may be may be helpful higher the drink prostacyclin such kind of additional treatments can be given, can be okay. given. but anticoagulants are for vascular okay thrombi Vasc- venous venous sorry, venous thrombi okay so in this patient the patient uh, during the span of one week a patient has improved the sensorium initially the on arrival the patient was in hyperglycemic and metabolic acidosis state okay for which we have followed the treatment of dk with the hhs kind of a management of fluid what are the basic difference between hhs and dk sir uh, the basic differences was uh, hhs and dk the glucose level initially in dk we see a range of uh, 250 to 600 whereas in hhs state more than 600 usually the glucose and the serum osmolality is more than 320 in hhs 280 to 320 is the dk range and in dk the characteristically ph will be from 6.9 to 7.3 uh, acidic ph whereas in hhs it will be usually normal ph what you have to understand is dk the acidosis can be due to various reasons not only dk patient can have same patient can have renal failure same patient can have lactic acidosis same patient might have taken alcohol and dk can coexist same like that hhs Hitch also on. can have associated acidosis due to see same type of reasons and hhs patient can have because of vomiting or starvation you can have uh, ketone. ketone bodies also so theoretically it may be different but practically we are treating same disease okay next uh, other uh, kind of uh, differences significantly we can see is the urine uh, ketone body is being positive more in dk than plus or minus in hh okay this is only theory, theory yes. uh, and urine ketones behind. nowadays uh, we don't see at all because uh, if the patient is having normal renal function then that can be seen suppose the patient is in renal failure you may not get it at all and urine ketones can be persisted for a longer period than serum ketones so for prognosis purpose or the diagnosis purpose in a higher settings like tertiary care center it may not be useful but a primary care setting or secondary care setting this is a very useful investigation Yes, okay anything else to be uh, added in hhs there will be at least 8 to 10 liter of volume deficiency uh-huh. whereas in dk 6 to 8 liters is the theoretical okay anything else hypernatremia hypernatremia is a classical finding in hhs, HHS. Yes. whereas in dk it will be low even corrected uh, sodium also will be low in dk okay. but it will be very high in hhs okay from the sodium level itself we can actually calculate the required amount of water from the free, uh, free fluid free calculation fluid requirement you can calculate 
Okay.